Now, in Queensland, did you hear about the Hooning Patrol being set up? This is a Hooning CCT vehicle deployed from the councillor known as Jacob. He's a young fella and he thinks he's getting crime off the streets. After significant hooning on apparently some street, they've set up, the, I should say, they've deployed an anti-hooning surveillance vehicle. Now, this is the council. They've spent 250 grand. How can it cost this much? A trillion 600 billion worth. For, a, a trillion 400. What? That's a lot of GoPros. I should be a trillion 400 billion. 250 grand. It's hard to even say it, it's so much. Part of a hooning task force. Now, I started reading comments. Not happy from a lot of, a lot of locals. You think your, your tax money is paying off this ridiculous car to stop what? No, this is a 1984 surveillance state. Got to catch those deadly hoons. Time to name and shame. There's a lot of comments like, instead of making a pad for some tip-ins, they spent 250 grand on a car with cameras. It's pretty much how it sums up the point. For some tip-ins. You gotta please report hooning to the Hoon hotline. Now who picks, who, who is exactly on the end of the Hoon hotline? There are a few Karens loving this though. Excellent news. So many hotspots to choose from. It's really disappointing. Even on a new section of Green Road, there's now got tire marks. There's tire marks, Luke, so we better mm -hmm. spend it, se se better deploy the task force. This sounds like a, um, this actually sounds like a ping pong productions uh, video, but yeah? You couldn't make this up, Luke. I was going through comments and there's actually a comment here by I'm not joking, Karen. This is not, this is not a joke. I'm not joking about this. What does it say? Eastern Drive at Regents Park is another trouble spot. <laughs> then Councillor Jacob actually replies, thank you for your enthusiasm and letting me know about another hooning spot. I will make sure this is noted for future deployments of this vehicle. Autobots, transform and roll out. <laughs> <laughs> deployments? Most of the comments though, were not like that. that most of the comments are not happy about this is how they're spending their money. Dumbest way to spend 250 grand of taxpayer money. How about building a track to support the one that's already in Brisbane? So true. I think this bloke deserves a set to be blown on his driveway. Now, there was a lot of comments like that. Bet, bet, bets on how quickly his driveway is skidded on. <laughs> Just sums up Logan. Yeah, I've, I have heard that about Logan. New stickers, Luke. Aussie style, big and small. I'll also be putting on a t-shirt. Oh yeah. This and plenty more, i.e. 2K Barra stickers in our shop, shop.fullboost.com.au. Hey, Jordo, what mm. do you think about these uh, sweatshirts? We might get some hate mail if we keep calling them sweatshirts, yeah? It's called a jumper, Luke, get it right. Australian, it's jumper. not a sweatshirt. It's, it's not a pullover, what? it's a jumper. Jumper. It's a wind cheater. Talking about dropping a set, this was an interesting comment I saw on our YouTube channel. You can't wear Alice the World on a full boost channel. Tell me one, name one Alice that's boosted from factory. What? They don't exist today, Luke. There's not one Alice that came from the factory with boost. <laughs> this bloke has just his own, he's rolled us. Did you know, I've, I've, I've got this guy, he's got us, because did you know, boost only comes in the form of a turbocharger, Jordo. Come on, man. What are we talking about? I mean, wasn't there, I think the Series 2 VF, pretty much, pretty much every HSV they sold was boosted, yeah? Yep. Never heard of an engine called the old LSA? I'm not, not a joke. It's, it's, it's arguably, at the moment, it's probably, what I see, the most common LS swap now is an LSA engine. It's a factory OE motor with a supercharger. Drop it straight in. But there's so many GM Corvette, it's not just um, the LSA, there's so many variants that are supercharged. Most um, supercharge kits now are really just upgraded superchargers for an already supercharged engine. Yeah, and an LSA is effectively an LS3, isn't it? 
Now have a look at this uh, video here that Harrop did. Mm. Blue Mini, Steve's um, VK here. With the uh, 2650 uh, H2650, H2650i, I believe it's called, because it's, uh, it's an inverted supercharger. <laughs> Yeah, cool car. Very cool car. This thing will be an absolute weapon. Hmm? I don't even know where you're bringing this up. I mean, 2K Barra. It's, it's pathetic. <laughs> Ever since the demise of Holden, we do not have a four-door V8 you can buy here. It's all, you know, Mustang and Camaro stuff. Not the most practical cars. This is one car I wish they would make right-hand drive. 2022 Cadillac CT5 Blackwing. Now, if you don't know what this car is, four, basically it's a four-door family car, 6.2 LT4, 668 horsepower, or, and 659 foot-pounds. That's 498 kilowatts, 893 newton meters. Standard comes with a Tremec six-speed manual. Yes, and it actually has a six-speed manual standard. Or yeah. you can option a 10-speed auto. This thing looks mint. I, I, I really like yeah. the, um, the look of the late model Cadillacs. I think they've been a bit polarizing. I've always thought they're cool. How good would it be if that come to Australia? I know it's not going to happen, but how cool would that be? I've got to correct you there. Up until, I think, you could buy a 300C Chrysler. They're a bit long in the tooth, aren't they? Could you get them in a manual? They've sold, I don't know, I read somewhere they'd sold like five this year. No, you can't get a manual one. No. So they're, they're no more. You can't buy a Jeep. An SRT Jeep, you can only buy the, the 5.7. And there, and most of that stuff's pretty old generation now. Yeah, it's not new. Like a lot of those cars yep. are seven or eight years old. <laughs> that is one car I reckon would do quite well here. Yeah, but they're never gonna come here because they're, we drive on the wrong side of the road. Wrong side of the road. That's never going to happen, Jordy. You're not going to. You're not going to see many cars out of America being converted because we don't sell enough cars here. No, but you have to wonder if other countries combine. I mean, obviously they think that in the right-hand drive market is just not big enough. Then you have got England, who who are just obsessed about fuel economy. They're not going to sell crap there. Yeah, but generally cars like Mustangs and Camaros or whatever, it's a, it's a weekend car or it's a daily car for plenty of people. But I mean, it's not the most practical car. Generally, if people want a four-door that's practical, they go and buy some SUV, yeah? Or they buy a fart cannon. Bruh. Aren't you considering a fart cannon at the moment? Everyone will say, hey, hey, maybe I should buy a golf wagon. I'd only buy the wagon. That's just, oh, no, no, don't buy, don't, do not buy that. So then I'll be like, okay, what should I buy? It's just crickets. <laughs> yeah, crickets. I'm like, no, what do you not, want me to buy? There's not a lot of comparable cars to that thing. No, if you want, if you want a, a wagon, I don't want a freaking SUV. If you want something like a wagon and uh, some performance, uh, or you just, you just get told, just go buy an Audi RS6. It's like, yeah, that's in the same uh, price range. Yeah, but um, that's off topic, Jordo. I won't be buying one anytime soon. In all honesty, until things are back to normal in Australia, I don't see any point in buying a new car. You can't walk into, for example, a golf. You can't walk in and say, "Yeah, give me that golf wagon." Here's the money. You can't. You can't buy anything now. Well, there's massive um, semiconductor shortages. It's affected Toyota and a bunch of other brands, and cars are just sitting there, effectively built, and no ECUs and other components mean they're like 99% done. But obviously, you can't sell them. So it's really mucked up so many, uh, not just cars, obviously, but just yeah. so, so many things. I've just got to wait for the four-door Yaris station wagon. We all sit. <laughs> well, speaking of Yaris, the fans of the mighty Corolla, apparently it was supposed to come out later this year or was it early next year? And that's completely been delayed. Now they're saying end of next year. So the, uh, the three-cylinder Corolla, which for some reason everyone was frothing over just because it had extra doors, even though it'd be slower and not as nice. But anyway. Hey. Speaking of uh, new cars, did you see Subaru have shown off their new Bruh. WRX model? Now, Bruh. 
I have a Subaru, but I'm certainly no Subaru, uh, you know, diehard. To me, the back of it looks different, but... Magma design tail lights. Bruh. Overall, I didn't think it looked that much different to a current Subaru. Very often people don't realize there's something wrong with their vision. Gee, I, I never wore glasses. Why do I need them now? And Someone even said it actually looks like an SUV with those square, those weird wheel arches. And it's, and it's just kind of lowered and a bit... Yeah, it's, think of a Toyota, Toyota RAV4. It's got the yeah. same square, yeah, squarish wheel gu guards. So that is a 2.4 litre in the US anyway. I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, FA. This, I'm not sure. So it is an FA motor, isn't it? Still not overly the most powerful engine out there, is it? For realistically, for what it is. No, I think it's making about 270 horsepower. Um, makes earlier torque. Yeah. But I don't know if you've ever driven an, if you've ever driven an FA engine, they don't sound. They don't sound like a WRX, they just sound... And of course, still selling with that horrid CVT transmission. Rubbish. Yeah. That's just a big no there. And every other manufacturer's got uh -huh. DSGs. Bruh. Mm. I guess they know a lot of their market will buy a manual, but come on, you can't be selling that performance. What's supposed to be a performance car with a CVT, that's just... Rubbish. Rubbish. Jordy, this new model, if they sold it... In a wagon, you know, they sell a thing called a Lavorg, which is sort of like a WRX wagon. It's a bit heavy, but but it's got that rubbish transmission in it. The Lavorg too, as you said, it's not really a WRX wagon. It's no, it's like a it's it, it's it's really a Liberty. Yeah, it looks yeah not the it's best. It's pretty watered down looking. Yeah, mm. and and a bloody CVT. I mean, come on. Rubbish. Going doing the rounds of the internet a few weeks ago. Remick, if you don't know, they're a uh, electric car builder. Hey, how, how do you pronounce that? Remick, Remark, what is it? Raymac. How do the Americans pronounce oh, it? Oh, Raymac. I, I don't know. <laughs> this is a Croatian guy. He's like the, you could say he's a little bit like Elon Musk, as in he's mm. achieved so much at a young age. He's created this car yeah. brand, and he's had this car in the making for about 10 years. It's incredible. Full electric hypercar. Like, think of... Uh, it would be a competitor to something like a a high end Koenigsegg or something like that. But oh, it's the one. It's the one that they crashed on Top Gear. Yeah. Yeah. Many years ago, they crashed a prototype. That's when Hammond went off the uh, embankment and he it caught fire in that. But um, mm. this is an all wheel drive. Think of like a hypercar. Nineteen hundred horsepower. Thirty. I think thirty six hundred newton meters. Rid ridiculous. Of course, because it's uh, electric, it's heavy. I think it's two point two ton. All wheel drive. Mm. They were running high eights on just some um, ru runway road recently. And Go even track. That, yeah, yeah gar mm. garbage. And it's just on stock Michelin, I think, PS4S tyres. It's not like it's on fancy yeah, tyres. Yeah. So they take it to the drag strip, an actual real drag strip, consistent eight fives, 167 miles an hour. I think it was 60 footing in the low, mm. from memory, I think it was low one fours. Would that be right? On street tyres. Yeah, pretty hard to go under a 1.4. But the, I think the most surprising thing is still to me is how many people just get salty about it. What? Why are they yeah. so against an electric car? Like, I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. Yeah, they just go on about how it doesn't have the noise and the smells and all this. <clears throat> You're telling me you get in this thing and run a mid-eight... And he basically said, mm. too, the thing's easy to drive. He's barely even touching the steering wheel. It's that stable. And go, oh, no, it's boring. Rubbish. <coughs> <coughs> Jesus. What's that? Delta, Alpha, Lambda? <coughs> what have you got there? Speaking of Lambda. Anyway, the, um, yeah, the amount of salt. Boring, rubbish, crap. I, I don't understand the negativity. Now, I'm not talking about some electric car like a Nissan Leaf, which is, it just looks like a nugget. <laughs> is slow for an electric car and it's just completely overpriced. This car, you can sit there and go, it's garbage. There's no other car in the world that can get, compete anywhere near it with the performance. And yes, it's something like- Well, the, the, the new Tesla uh, is pretty damn fast and realistically, it's like one tenth of the price. Yeah, I was gonna say the Remark is like, I think it's 2.3 million US dollars or something. You, you correct yeah. me. I, but I look, it's a different, it's a, it, it's a hypercar, whatever you call it. it. Exactly, it's, it's a completely different car. Sedan. The Tesla is incredible for the value for, for performance. Those things, those played versions, they're running, I think, 920s down the quarter. And you remember, this is not meant to be a hypercar. This is effectively a four-door 
sedan. There was a video posted, it ran I think at 7 minute 30 or 7.35 around the Nürburgring. That's flying. You watch this video, these electric cars, they come out of the corners, 100 k's, they're at 200 like that. The way they put the power down. No, no, it is, don't get me wrong, it is fast, but there's plenty of um, four-door cars that, that are running like the same speed around the Nürburgring. Oh, it is, it is. But I mean, it's gone to the days when mm. people are like, oh, they don't handle their garbage. They've come a long way. Oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. So it's a four-door car. Well, it's a four-door large car. Large family car, car, large car. They're huge, Teslas. If you get yeah. up close to them, if you've never been, if you mm. haven't looked at them in, in person, they're actually a very big car, very wide. Well, because the battery is all on the floor, you've got a lot, of, there's a lot of cabin space in there. Anyway, you've got a four-door big car. It's running 730s around the Nürburgring, and it's trapping, you know, over 150 in the quarter mile. <laughs> it's not much you can fault with it, is there, really? No, no. But it's yeah. rubbish. <laughs> Just, <laughs> it, still, it still surprises me how fast. It's like people writing comments like it could run a six. It's still rubbish. What, what are you talking about? These are people, in all honesty, have never been in any car that might, let's say a car that's capable of 160 on the quarter mile, they've never been in one. And if they have had, they'd realize a car that can accelerate that fast on the street, a great deal of time does not get traction. You can't use it. How about the video of the kid driving the Tesla and just slamming into the uh, building? Nick Mana. And then his mate's like, what, what happened? He's like, didn't break, bro, didn't break. It's like, you're doing 150 k's in a car park and then decide to break 30 meter, what, 20 meters from what? Well, it got airborne. Did you notice it got airborne over that hum? And you wonder, what's that gonna do to the car? Mm. It, doesn't, it would have like screwed its sensors up. Oh, that was just, and, he, and he wasn't like, <laughs> he didn't just give the building a tap. He was embedded in like pallet racking or something. Explain that to the insurance. Jordan, he's lucky because he sort of lined up the um, the entrance. Yeah, he got have slammed into one of those pylons. Someone noticed too. I didn't. I didn't actually notice this when I watched the video. The airbag didn't go off apparently. That's a bit strange. Surely that's enough of an impact to cause an airbag to go off. You just tell the tell the insurance company, hey, this thing was on autopilot. You know, it was brought up. That's a lot of performance you're giving to people who've probably never experienced anything like that. Because not only would they be shocked how fast it accelerates, they don't understand how fast mm. they're going. Mm. And the car doesn't have magic brakes and can just brake four times better than a normal car. Like... <laughs> What's well, that stopping it? It's got to stop a lot of weight. Exactly, yeah. Now, Luke, you did another video recently too, and you were walking around Shannon's showroom, showing up a lot of the cars that were going up for auction recently for their, uh, I think it's called their winter auction, isn't it? Or is it spring auction? One of them. Spring um, auction, yeah. yeah. There's a question here. Any RX-8s in the showroom? Now, I don't know if this bloke was watching the um, video, but do, does this look like a showroom or a wrecking yard? If you want RX-8s, there's only one place you're going to find them. Giggity, giggity, giggity. I think RX-8s are actually been copying some COVID tax because... You reckon they're going up in value? They are, they are. You, a couple of years ago, you could buy one for like a rough, rough as guts one that probably needs an engine rebuild. You could buy one for um, two grand, two, what, three grand. What year is an RX-8, the first ones? How, what year are they? Oh, three, I think. What car, even back a few years ago, a 2003 supposedly sports or performance car that you could buy for two grand. I mean, that is disgraceful how, <laughs> How far down in value people view these cars? Well, what, what was two grand? I reckon is about seven grand now. Oh, so there's gone are the days of the absolute, just a couple of pineapples and you got yourself an RX-8. There's quite a few on there. There's quite a few on there that might be over 10, but they've yeah. had an engine build. I think we all know there's not going to be another rotary. They, you know, they talk about this, it, it, it might come out what like some sort of hybrid thing mm. that's running on hydrogen probably. <laughs> There's not going to be another actual just solo ro uh, rotary engine running on gasoline. No, it'll probably be like um, 
option is, how, I can't even imagine them bringing that engine back at all, period. I mean, how would you even work it with a hybrid? You're gonna have a, a hybrid mixed with what? Basically a two, a two stroke. And a, an electric engine would give it some torque though. Yeah, but it's not exactly, using a rotary, and then you compare it to say Euro, what are they called? Euro six or seven emission standards, screwed. Don't get me wrong, I'd love to see another rotary out there, but. Yeah, I mean, compared to what they had to do the, uh, for the Renaissance motor, imagine what they'd have to do now. You look at the 90s, the golden era of Japanese cars, hey? Mm -hmm. So many uh, uh, cool models were released in the space of 10 years, and they all looked extremely different. Not like today, every car looks the same, yeah? Before about what, when it got, when it got down to about late, no, oh, you'd probably say early 2000s, then every manufacturer from then on now has got their global look. So before that, every car in the lineup, yeah. the small car versus the performance car, whatever it was, versus the family car, they all look nothing alike each other. That's why that's why the the look of the cars was so much more interesting. Now it's just, oh, who makes that? BMW, it's got a big grill. Every other um, manufacturer, you just go, oh, it's the same headlights on every car, whether it's a bloody uh, tradie U or all their performance car, same headlights basically. 